around. Look where you're going. Don't look at your horse. He's asleep right now. <laughs> He's asleep. I guess you just have to be more aggressive, that's all. He's in a different frame of mind than he was the other night. You got to think more ahead or he's going to just he's going to sleep on you, I'm telling you. Your head is pointed downward at him. I, you got to be looking upward. Um, take the end of, put the reins in one hand and then hold the tail of him and just flop him on him to make him go and that way you don't have to kick. You know what? Yeah, use the rein, the end of the rein. Yes, like that. There. Well, don't pull on his mouth when you do it. Okay. You don't you probably won't have to do it much. Now, be careful which way you're pulling his head cuz you're right now you're pulling it in the wrong direction by doing that. Can you see that you're pulling on the right rein instead of the left? Okay. Now, you got to get your act together cuz you don't have your act together and he's just he's just like going he's taking care of you right now. But you don't want to give him the impression that he has to do that all the time. You, you need to give him the impression that you got your act together and not get it together after you get going. This is real important to your survival, is to have your act together before you move and have it together quickly. Now, make sure you have the reins aware they're loose, but yet you can react and stop him. Don't be holding him back now. Don't be holding him back. Now you're looking down at him and you're going to come to a... Okay, a stop, I was going to say. Okay, we're getting all this on video so you can watch how you act. Because you'll be a, a surprise. People don't realize. Now be careful. Be careful. There you go. Now let go of it quickly. Don't hold it so long. That's it. That release is just as important as the take. Take and release is real important, the timing of it. You're pretty vulnerable because your reins are real. It uh, doesn't look like if something happened, you could do anything about it. But... Uh, I don't think anything will happen right now. But if, if he decided to do, there, I feel better now. Rest. We're getting all this on video, so this will be an education for you of all the things not to do. <laughs> this will be a good edge for your survival. That's if he's imperfect and not perfect. All right. Or I'm imperfect. That's right. All this is meant for your survival. Now, he's not focused at all. He's going to fall asleep, and you look like you're just staring a hole in the back of his head. I don't know why. But your thoughts have to leave him, and you have to get out of his head. Ride. Look, look ahead. Look ahead. Think ahead. Forget about your horse, and think about uh, just riding. Forget about your horse. Think about what you're supposed to do. Okay, you're looking up now. Looks like we're moving out a little bit, too. Okay. Now we're moving out. All right. Your posture's changed a little bit. Your shoulders are back a little more, and you're looking up. So he'll move out a little more. you got to keep that weight in your seat and the pressure with your legs. you got to keep that pressure up, and then when your legs get tired, just rest. And don't be surprised if you're riding properly, if your legs get tired in one minute, even just one minute, because it is uh, physically challenging a little bit. So I tell my students, never ride when you're tired or you can't give 100%, rest. And you're allowed to rest anytime you want. That's the great thing about riding with me. I let people rest anytime they want, because I work with tons of people um, our age and older that need that aren't in shape for this kind of stuff, but they need it. Now again, you look like you're drilling a, a hole in the back of his head with your eyeballs. It looks like you're just staring a hole in the back of his head. I don't, it doesn't look right for some reason. Yeah, and that, and he knows that and he's like, here's what's going through a horse's head when you're doing that. Why is he staring at the back of my head, not just riding on? Pretty ears. Yes, he has pretty ears. Now, here's what my daddy used to tell me when I was uh, taking lessons with him. Stare between their ears. That way you know what they're thinking and where you're going at the same time. So that's a good word of advice right there, is stare between the ears. That way you can keep his concentration and his head straight ahead. So. But know where you're going and think ahead, see? You gotta be thinking ahead. Can't be thinking with the horse, 
Think ahead of the horse, because guess what? You're in charge, and you're the leader. He's not leading you. You've got to lead him. So, in other words, you're riding him. You've got to have a presence about you, a certain energy about you, and step it up more than his presence. In other words, show him you got more energy than him. And if he's working, yeah, if he's working your legs, there you go. Just wave that at him, and yeah, there. You know what? You must have been reading my mind there. Don't work so hard with your legs. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Okay. Now you're getting what's called feel. That's called feel when you can, with little effort, make a horse do what you want. With little effort. So all that waving and kicking you're doing with your feet is a wasted effort if you can just wave that rein on his butt every now and then. But that takes feel, and you don't need to wave it on too much because now he knows that he needs to stay at a certain pace. So this is, a, this is the kind of riding that helps your survival rate go way up when you ride like this because you have their attention and they have your respect when you're pushing them. When you're not pushing them, okay, now see, he has your respect now because you're using that rein for a signal and he's a well-trained horse and so he respects that. So don't overuse it. You can see how easily it is to overuse it. Yeah. But see, this is feel now. This is part of getting real feel for a horse and this is important. This could be a very educational video for you. Thank you, Yvonne of Yvonne Shar video performance. Yes, Kurtz. <laughs> Kurtz. <laughs> All right. Maintain an equal pace. So it's a one, two, three, four count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, you're working too hard and he's working you. There. See how smart they are? <laughs> now, make sure he is see by his expression where his intention is it's not with you so tip his nose in the direction you're going and in, inspire him a little bit to walk a little faster and you'll have him but don't let him lollygag no lollygagging not if you want a nice ride no lollygagging that's when you guys are like old pros then you can lollygag <laughs> when you're old pros at, with each other. But at first it's got to be serious so that you set a, a relationship. They're, they're like a dog or a kid or I want to say a person or anybody. It's how you set the standards in the beginning that determine how the relationship's going to go. And you want to be firm but gentle and fair. And never try to get him tired unless it's a cold, windy day. <laughs> and then all bets are off. And another thing, they're always, their behavior is going to be different when they're out in a pasture than when they're penned up. It's going to be different. When they're penned up, they're going to have a lot more thought and energy to them. When they're in a pasture, they go into a different mode of more like laid back, um, not, not caring, not so sensitive, not so energetic, um, just different in a, in a laid back way. And for most people that's preferred is the pasture out there. But for people like me that perform, we don't like our horses like that, kind of dull and uh, always kind of tired or not tired but just not as responsive and eager to run or whatever whereas when they're pinned up and fed well they're like hey buddy you better work me or I'll buck your butt off kind of thing good now make sure that when you're not that you release and you're not just holding just to hold and then uh, when you do release have certain rules about that like he doesn't need to turn his head left and right but he can drop his head on the ground as low as he wants. Now, don't, don't hold on his mouth when he does that or he'll get heavy. 
So grab one or one corner or the other. Try not to grab on both at the same time, and then he won't start putting his head and stretching his face like Gabby does. See, Gabby started ducking out and doing that when Terry would respond with a heavy hold on his mouth. He started trying to duck out from underneath her. And if you hold on his mouth, he may do the same thing. So when you're sitting still, again, have control of his head, but let him lower his chin to the ground uninhibited if he needs to. And then he'll stop chewing on the bit. All these things I'm telling you are keys to their happiness, I guess you could say. And let's face it, we like it if they're happy. <laughs> And we don't like it if they're not happy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll tell you a quick story of in Sweden. I, I uh, was working with a lot of unhappy, not a lot, a few unhappy horses there that were in this uh, around or in this arena. And this little girl come in on this older horse and all bridled up. And boy, this horse was so unhappy before he even did anything. He was acting like Gabby, chomping at the bit, stressed out and this poor girl was in tears so I walked up and I undid her reins off the bit and I took the bridle off and I put the reins in the noseband and the horse started licking his lips and his tongue and wagging his tongue like a dog and wouldn't stop and just became relaxed and happy right there and the girl stopped crying and uh, it was funny all I did was take that bit off and uh, what was happening is the girl was so scared that she was transferring all that to the horse. And the horse was so wise, like Gabby, that he knew the score. And so it was freaking him out. And uh, boy, the minute I took that bit off, she relaxed. And so did the, when she saw that the horse relaxed and how important it was to not transfer all that nervousness through the reins, then she quit. But you can transfer your thoughts into a horse very easily. They can read your mind. Unfortunately or fortunately, however you choose to use it, they can read your mind. And if you get nervous or scared, often the best thing to do is get off before it escalates. In other words, if you think that horse is going to scare you, don't stay with it and cowboy it out unless you're like, bring it on. I don't care what you throw at me. Then stay on. You know, if you either have to have one attitude or the other because the horse will figure out quickly that he can buffalo you. They figure that out instantly. Um, it's interesting because the other day when I was over by the mailbox, uh -huh. we were working with Terry and Gabby, I got to a point where I was thinking, he's, he's escalating, he's getting restless, more restless, more restless. And I watched it happening. And I should have gotten off because I was thinking, this is. I don't know where he's going to take this. And with, those, with that thought process, save your life because it's not worth getting hurt. And it could have happened that way. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I set up all that because before you guys left with these horses, I had to know what was going to happen under a pressure situation like that. And I'm so, I'm so happy we did it. And tell